We're Jimmy and Natalie, and since our last video, we've spent a few days in Denver, Colorado, taking in the city vibe. We're here in the off season, but we're trying to stick it out so we can see more of this beautiful state before it gets to be too cold for us. Since this is our first time in Boulder, we don't really know where we're headed. So I was just looking on the phone on the drive over and I picked out a spot that I think would be pretty cool. It has really good reviews and it looks like it's right in the middle of downtown. So it should be a good spot to see what the town looks like. So after checking out three breakfast places, spending over an hour driving around, we have not been able to find parking or the place has an hour and 15 minute wait. And at this point, it's lunchtime. So I think we're just gonna give up on finding a spot in downtown Boulder. You know, if we make this a city versus nature video, I think I know which one would win right now. <laughs> Jimmy found a nice trail that I think we're gonna go check out and we're just gonna make our own lunch. Hey, that's a nice view. So I think Natalie's getting a little tired of what we've been eating for lunch every day, which is the tofu wraps. So I'm gonna try to cheer her up this morning and uh, make a different type of lunch. It's probably gonna be pretty heavily wrap based, but uh, I hope she still likes it. All right, I got an idea, but so I'm gonna do a little spread, but you can't, you can't look. Okay. I've got your food prepared. Can I look? You can look. You might be a little mad. <laughs> that looks an awful lot like wraps. They're cute though. So I've prepared three different surprise wraps oh. <laughs> and I need you to eat them and guess. Well, don't look. Let me know if you think you can guess the ingredients. All right. All right, that's All right. fun. All right, do I bite it? Yeah, no looking though. There's broccoli and cheese and lettuce. It tastes a lot like what we normally do, but I don't taste the tofu. I might have just not gotten any in the bite. Am I right? Uh, yeah, you're right. That's, really? what, we, that's what we normally have. It's so pretty good. I had to give you the control test first. All right, <laughs> now carefully set that one down before it collapses. All right. And then uh, you gotta try the small one next. Okay, okay. Okay, it's really hard to eat something and not look into it. Mmm, something squishy. And peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> All right, so you gotta put that one down and then try your last one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what it is? Is it pizza? <laughs> is that pizza? <laughs> <laughs> it's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like your food? I'm very proud of it. <laughs> no one has ever wrapped up pizza in a tortilla before. That's why I thought you'd be mad is because there's a lot of uh, a lot of bread. No. <laughs> no, I love it. They <laughs> it's really honestly not bad. Well done, Jimmy. You're a yeah, very inventive chef. Boulder is a really, really nice town. It's much less overwhelming than downtown Denver, for me anyway. And there's a lot of really nice hikes and I think you can see wildlife around here if you stay long enough. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, that works pretty well. Are you ready for the finale? Oh, hey! <laughs> gotcha. Not cool. <laughs> designated for children two to five and oh my gosh you can probably tell we're still getting warmed up for today we're probably just gonna head north from here we still have the bus back in Salt Lake City so we don't want to get too far away also, the mountains are getting to be a bit much for us. So we just stopped into Planet Fitness real quick, got a quick workout. I was really planning on showering, but they were a little too nasty, so hopefully we'll find another one in the next few days. But that being said, I think we're just gonna hit the road. We've got a big drive picked out ahead of us, and I think Jimmy found a nice spot on some BLM land. 
and I've really missed staying on BLM land. Um, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, these last couple days have been pretty rough. Yeah, I think the city has been getting to us. Is <laughs> too much of a downer? <laughs> uh, it'll get better. So the route we picked cuts pretty heavily through some windy mountain roads. This will probably be the last time we get gas before that. So we're trying to be safe by topping up before we head into that really sketchy section because we don't know what it's going to be like there. It's going to be so nice cleaning all the windows for me. I do feel a little spoiled sitting in here just watching him though. In our last video that came out, which for us is the New Mexico road trip, there are a lot of comments about a rattling noise in the back of the van while we're driving. And I'm happy to say that I think we have totally fixed it. We thought back and realized that um, in our previous videos before people were mentioning it, we didn't have that painting up that's behind me on the side wall. And so we isolated it down to that. So it turns out it was the frame of that painting rattling against the wall whenever we drove. So right now we've got a temporary fix for it, but I think eventually we're gonna just screw it down so it's really secure. Check it out. Good luck. So we found some really nice BLM land. We're still in Colorado and this is a really pretty spot. So I'm hoping that we can find a place to park. We're showing up with very little daylight left and a lot of these spots are super muddy. It's supposed to snow all night. So we really, really don't want to get stuck. Oh, no dice. Really? It's not a campsite. It's just like one long road. It's really soft mud. It's all of my shoes. The sun is setting, Jimmy. I Hurry know. up. <laughs> oh, I'm determined to get a spot because it's so pretty here. Yeah, I'm about ready to just park on the road and deal with the consequences. It. Yeah, honestly, but <laughs> I'd rather not have to do that. So I guess we'll keep going. That's a road. That's a spot. And that is a giant mud pit. What are we gonna do? Um, so we switched spots because we got to turn around. Um, we reached the end of the public land. We didn't really see any campsites that we would be comfortable in. They're all just insanely muddy and it's only gonna get worse when it snows tonight. Normally when we find BLM land, it's super straightforward. There's like different types of parking spaces. Some are really muddy, some are easy to pull in. This is just totally not what we were expecting. And it's like the only free camping spot that we've seen in a long, long time because a lot of them are closed for the winter. I think this would be fine, especially just overnight. Yeah, home sweet home. <laughs> Literally 20 feet from a proper campground, but it's too muddy, we can't get in it. But I think this will work. It will have to. Hey. He was uh, asking if we wanted to buy any firewood. Oh, that would have been nice. Yeah, I kind of stumbled over my words, but like, I think I would have if we actually had a campsite. So it seems like we're not here in the best of seasons. We're not quite done with Colorado yet. We were so excited to get here. We really want to explore why we still can. It honestly does feel like we're running out of time because everywhere we go, all the roads are closed. The national park centers are starting to close down, which in hindsight, you know, like makes a lot of sense. So. What we've done is we've traveled back west and we're kind of heading towards like the Dinosaur National Monument area. And uh, I think that's gonna be our plan for tomorrow. But for right now, we found some flat land with little ice. We're gonna make some dinner and probably pick you back up tomorrow. So we were in bed last night by 8 p.m. Now it's 5 a.m. and we are wide awake. One thing I love about living in 80 square feet is once you make the bed, a third of the entire house is totally clean. Such an easy win.
we just had the thing that most drone owners hope that they never have to do, which uh, is go and track down their drone that fell mid-flight. It was the weirdest thing. It was flying, Jimmy was getting some good footage, and then just kind of out of nowhere, it started going down. And it didn't stop. So Jimmy got to take a little uh, early morning snowy hike through all the shrubbery. And thankfully we have it back. I'm out of breath. Aww. <laughs> We don't have a windshield wiper scraper, so she's using my flip flop to scrape the snow off the windshield. At least, like, we're almost out to the main road. It's not so bad once you're on it. Oh, we made it. <laughs> I never the one too bad. Like, Jimmy, no, you gotta play it up. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> we oh almost died. That was pretty vertical, but honestly, our van handled it fine. And now we're back on the paved road, and it's been snow plowed, which I'm very relieved to see. So, we are gonna head to Dinosaur National Monument, and we'll pick you up when we get there. Onward to dinosaurs. Woohoo! And we're the only ones here. Are there even employees? I don't think so. The visitor center is actually closed during the winter, at least on the Colorado side. Colorado is just closed right now. We've been dealing with it for the last couple of weeks, but it just is getting more and more closed. I don't know what we're gonna do here, but uh, I know I'm hungry, so I think we're gonna make some lunch while we think about it. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, that sounds good. I figured. All right, do you wanna tell them the bad news or should I? Uh, is it that the visitor center's closed and the park ranger told us it's not worth our time to drive into the park? Yeah, that's it. So our original plan was to do two stops at the Dinosaur National Monument. Um, for those who don't know, it actually spans over the states of Colorado and Utah. So we were gonna stop once in each state. We're at the visitor center on the Colorado side and we already knew that the visitor center was closed, but a park ranger stopped by and told us that pretty much all the drives that we were about to do were not safe or, or closed down because of the weather currently. So I think we're just gonna entirely skip this side of the National Monument and head over to the Utah side and uh, I guess check it out there. Admittedly, I think it's supposed to be better on the Utah side. You can actually see dinosaur bones and fossils, which I am pretty excited about. Well, I don't got to worry about hitting anyone in the parking lot. <laughs> hey, how are you? Hi. Good. I've got the uh, America the Beautiful Pass. Our goal for today is to see just one real live dinosaur. Jimmy, what does extinct mean? So I think the short of it is there was a river that ran through here and it dried up causing a lot of the dinosaurs to unfortunately pass away and uh, some that remained but either way when their water came flooding back it actually washed all the remains of the dinosaurs all into one big bunch and that's what we see behind us. And it drowned some of the ones that survived the initial drought so it was pretty brutal. So they call this the uh, a log jam of dinosaurs. And they built the building that we're in right now around the rock wall so they didn't really have to damage anything to put this here so I think that's cool. It's helping to ease my disappointment a little. You're allowed to do this, I promise. I really want to climb it though. It's a baby Stegosaurus. This one was a pretty weird monument to go to. All of this was added on to the starting point, which is the exhibit hall and the wall of bones later, I think like in the thirties. And so this has really nothing to do with the actual dinosaur part of it. He said it's all hyper condensed into this one area where we're at now. Yeah, that is the cool thing. Like everything's named after the dinosaurs, but like it's just a lot of preserved wilderness. So it's a good thing overall. Yeah. 
I'm surprised it's not called a national park at this point because like monuments in my mind are only a few acres, but I'm pretty sure this one is 200,000 acres. Yeah, it spans way into Colorado. Yeah, literally two states worth, so. Yeah. There's a lot of cow pies. Oh, you wanna do this one right here? I think so, yeah. If it's allowed. I don't know about that, but we can do it. It's a nice spot. I already saw some trash here, so we're gonna go ahead and clean it up in case a ranger does come by and tell us to move. I don't want them to think that we're leaving beer cans everywhere and stuff. So it's getting later and later in the day and Jimmy and I kind of find ourselves continuously like watching out of the window to see if somebody's gonna pull up and tell us that we're not allowed to park here. Cause honestly this spot feels just like too good to be true. It's so nice and we're so close to the park. So the spot that we found is like right on the border between the National Monument and BLM land. There's fire pits and there's definitely treads. We didn't have to, you know, run over any vegetation to get here. So I think it's probably fine, but it's also so close to the National Monument, I could see them having an issue with it. They're right there. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi ladies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jimmy, they're babies. Oh, Aww. they're like surrounding the van. <laughs> oh. Okay, so no deer, but there are plenty of cows out here. That is so cute. That made my night. I'm so happy to be out here. So we've been watching these cows go across for the last several minutes. And you can tell which one is the lead cow because she went first and she also... I don't know if she saw us when she went by the van, so she just kind of, you know, trotted on past. And then the rest of the cows came up and they saw us and they froze. And you could tell they were kind of scared to move forward. But she came back and then she was mooing and uh, tell, basically just, I think, trying to tell them, like, it's safe, you guys can go. I wonder if that's the leader. It definitely seems like the head cow. Finally, she got the whole herd to move and they all got past the van and they moved on. But then she came back and uh, kept mooing behind where everyone came from, even though I don't see any more cows. And so she went back and I think that maybe someone got left behind. That's like so sweet. That is cute. I can still occasionally hear a cow. Night, Jimmy. Good night, Matt. The cows hung out here all night. We could hear them mooing periodically, like from laying in bed, and they're all still here. <laughs> and I was planning on going on a run this morning. I, I know this probably sounds really dumb, but I, I do want to be really cautious so that I don't get kicked by a cow, because I don't want to do anything that would make them feel threatened. I might still try and go on my run, but I'm gonna go out of my way to avoid bothering the cows. Oof. Bye Jimmy, love you. Bye, my goal for today is I wanna run 20 minutes really, really slowly, and then I wanna run 20 minutes as fast as I can, basically, but like taking breaks. I can't keep up the super fast pace for very long, but it's fun to do it in spurts. But man, do the cows hate it. Since Natalie's out running, I figured I should probably not make her hate me when she gets back and I should probably clean up the van. Is it perfect? Maybe. But is it good enough? Definitely yes. Hey! Hey. Welcome back from your run. Oh, 
Thank you. It looks nice in here. Oh, don't even. <laughs> Well, we came all the way out to Dinosaur National Monument, so I figured we might as well go see some stuff that isn't just dinosaurs. So we're gonna go check out some petroglyphs and do a small hike. Trail closed. <laughs> Trail is closed beyond this point due to falling rocks. Well, at least it's not the weather this time. Gosh, Colorado really doesn't want us to be here. We're in Utah now. Oh, that's true. <laughs> they don't like us either. <laughs> what state will take us? Oh, there's more uh, petroglyphs right there. Oh, wow, that's a bunch of them. Oh, that's them. a ton of them. Well, a short hike is still a hike, even though this one was literally like 75 feet. The petroglyphs around here are around 1,000 to 1,500 years old, but the dinosaur bones that we saw yesterday were around 149 million years old. This kind of puts it into perspective. So behind me is the cabin to one Josie Morris, who built and lived here around in the 60s. I think she gets a lot of credit for building her livestock pens down here. And that is her still standing main house. So first thing I'm noticing, I, I think Josie must have been pretty short. <laughs> Why build it any taller than you have to, right? This looks so cozy. <laughs> If someone says Box Canyon, Jimmy and I say, which direction? And we actually do mean that. It took us a while to find the trailhead. Good. I'm good. <laughs> it's really hard to put a Box Canyon into perspective, but we're gonna try. So there's Natalie, all the way up. There's the box canyon. I think we found the perfect trail for a picnic. Well, too bad it's like 10 a.m. and uh, not time for lunch yet. We got water. We'll, I'll share it with you. So out of the 210,000 acres of the Dinosaur National Monument, I don't think we're going to get to all of it today. Probably not. And to be fair, we did try to see a lot more, but it was all closed. We got to come back in a different time of the year. I hope you enjoyed this one, and thank you so much for watching. Bye. Echo. Moo. Moo. <laughs> that was a good one. That's a good echo. Well, much like the dinosaurs, things are looking pretty dead here. Wow. That's bad. All right, we're going to end the video. Bye. <laughs>